This is KGW News at 11. A very good evening, everyone. And first at 11, tensions rise on the Portland State campus as protesters demanding a ceasefire in Gaza are once again warned to leave the school's main library. This is a live look where there are still barricades up on the front steps with protesters inside and outside of the building. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko. As of right now, there have been warnings, but no police action to remove the protesters who first broke into the building Monday night. And some two days in, we got a look at some of the damage from a source inside the library. Shattered windows, damaged equipment, piled up furniture, and lots and lots of graffiti. PSU's president saying 50 or so students did choose to leave the library peacefully overnight after some negotiating with the university. Today, we also witnessed some fighting with a group dressed all in black shoving a man off the steps of the library. And then late tonight, some broke off from a protest march of roughly 100 or so people around downtown to smash and tag the windows of local businesses. Amidst all of this, the campus has remained closed, though tonight PSU tells us they plan to reopen and resume in-person classes tomorrow. So let's get right to live team coverage at Portland State. We have Catherine Cook on what's still looking like a stalemate some 48 hours in. But first to Alma McCarty with a look at those demonstrators that took the streets of downtown, including a few who it appears use this all as an excuse to destroy property. And Alma, I understand you just got some new information from police. Yes, David, correct. From Portland Police, they have taken some reports, they tell us, of some damage, of some vandalism that was downtown and are investigating these crimes. However, there have been no arrests made at this time. Now, as you can tell, I am live on the Portland State University campus with the library here behind me, where a lot of the activity over the last several days has been concentrated. Now, the march through downtown happened or started, I should say, a little north of here, um, still in the so South Park blocks before the demonstrators, the pro-Palestinian demonstrators headed towards the waterfront chanting as they went. Now we had one KGW crew who witnessed the group marching down Market Street with Palestinian flags and signs calling for a ceasefire in Gaza and a free Palestine. Overall, the majority of people marching were still peaceful and did not cause harm to any people. However, as you mentioned, small groups broke off from the main one, causing some damage and some vandalism. Video shows some smashing windows at the Starbucks at Pioneer Courthouse Square. Our crew also witnessed people throwing tables and chairs there. The damage here was superficial for the most part since the store has double pane windows now. We also saw graffiti on surrounding businesses and on that Starbucks reading Free Gaza and May Day. An ATM at that location was also busted up. Now, Portland police said investigators from the Central Precinct took reports of damage and received at least one report of an explosion. However, as I mentioned, no arrests have been made at this time, though they said that does not mean arrests will not happen later. District Attorney Mike Schmidt also released a statement following today's demonstration, and in it he said that destruction will not be tolerated and that, quote, damaging property, making threats, and perpetrating trading violence are not acceptable, meaningful or productive ways to make a point. He also ended by saying that his office stands ready to prosecute cases related to these activities. Now the march itself only lasted about an hour or so with most of the people returning here to the Portland State campus where tonight several um, I would say maybe more than 200 folks remain outside of the building this evening. Back to you, David. Yeah, watching and waiting. Alma, appreciate your reporting there. Let's bring in Catherine Cook now. Catherine, the big question tonight, if and when Portland police plan to take action to either arrest the holdouts that are still inside the library or maybe force them to leave. And David, it's unclear what their next move will be. We haven't seen any police activity out here in several hours. Police calling this a very fluid situation. If I step out of the way and you can zoom in and see there are still several people standing outside the building at this late hour. Those remaining in the building library today were warned once again to leave. In a message to campus, University President Ann Cudd said anyone still in the library is committing criminal trespass and must leave immediately. She said PSU is cooperating with law enforcement on that matter. Around 5 o'clock tonight, a small group from Portland Police entered the library. We're told they warned those inside to leave and then they left. 
The police bureau hasn't said much about any plans to clear the library. This afternoon, they shared that they're, quote, actively collaborating with PSU and that a lot of work is being done in the background to find a resolution. They also noted that time is a key de-escalation tactic. They said if they can delay police action to a time when conditions are safer, they will. Now, it's not clear who is responsible for the bulk of the damage inside the library, but it appears a group at PSU now includes others who weren't there when it started. And we talked with sociologist Randy Blazak tonight. He was actually a professor at PSU for 20 years. Blazak says in Portland, protest groups are often joined by others who see it as an opportunity to further a larger or different activist agenda. They can hijack it, for lack of a better word. They can kind of push the student voice out of it. And it's a real challenge when you have a campus movement to keep it a campus movement and not have it be co-opted by outside uh, activists. Sometimes those are the exact same people, but sometimes the student voice gets lost in that. Back live at PSU tonight, once again, the university will reopen tomorrow with classes resuming. University officials tell us students who don't feel comfortable coming to campus in person are asked to reach out to their instructors. David, back to you. Catherine Cook on the Portland State campus this evening. Catherine, thank you. Stay safe out there. By the way, in California, Los Angeles police have issued a citywide tactical alert after protesters at UCLA turned violent last night. The chancellor says a, quote, group of instigators, end quote, came on campus and attacked the pro-Palestinian encampment, resulting in some scuffles and about 25 people hurt. Classes were canceled today, and the LA mayor has now called for a full investigation Right now, there is a heavy police presence on that campus with authorities issuing a call for demonstrators to disperse. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is meeting with Israeli leaders saying the time is now for a ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas. If reached, a deal would pause the nearly seven months long war and allow for some hostages to be freed. Though the key sticking point, officials say whether the deal could end the Israeli offensive into Gaza, which is a key demand from Hamas. The U.S. and Arab partners are hoping to avoid an Israeli operation into the southern city of Rafah on the Egyptian border. That is more, more than 1.4 million Palestinians have been sheltering. Stay with KGW for continuing coverage of the Israel-Hamas war and the very latest on the Portland State campus updates right here as we get them, plus any time on KGW.com and on the KGW app. And of course, look for the latest on sunrise starting Thursday morning at 430. This hasn't been smooth. I, I will admit that. I mean, we've hit some bumps. We haven't, I don't think, communicated well. I regret that it's been messy. In other headlines tonight, Oregon Governor Tina Kotak taking questions there over the ethics controversy surrounding the role of the First Lady with a promise, she says, that as long as she is in the top job, there will be no official office of first spouse. Today, Kotak told reporters that Amy Kotak Wilson's role will depend on guidance from the Oregon Government Ethics Commission. Guidance, we should note, the governor only sought after several key members of staff, including her chief of staff, stepped down that widely reported in the media. The governor adding the first lady will not be making personnel decisions nor supervising staff and that she'd be assembling a first spouse manual to outline policies and procedures around the role. I want to be very clear what she is going to do right now until we get further guidance from the Oregon Government Ethics Commission, because that's what I've heard from folks. Well, what exactly is she doing now while you're waiting for that advice? Going on visits with me, doing ceremonial events as needed, listening to folks. I think that's very clear. The governor also acknowledged she has not communicated well around the issue, saying, quote, we have hit some bumps. This evening, teachers in the Gresham School District are calling for a change in district leadership after an uptake, they say, in violence and bad behavior in schools. Thomas Schultz has that story. It's been really hard. Kim Duncan Dad. is born and raised here in Gresham. And after graduating from Gresham High, she's come back as an employee. Though recently, her job's gotten tougher. We have a lot of um, students running roughshod over staff. And violence is high. These can be anything from a fist fight to 
a, a knife fight. Now union leaders say the school administration isn't consistently reprimanding students. It is again, really kind of ignoring protocols that are in place. Leading staff to call for a change of principles. There are real safety concerns and staff and students are afraid. Yeah, I see more violence. Trace King is a junior at Gresham. He says the school is different than his freshman year. Like nice game pulled out and my fist fighting. I don't feel safe at this school. Really? Yeah. That's why I'm out here. Out on the street, outside the building, which Duncan says is common. We have students who leave campus at lunch to go home and use the restroom because they're afraid to go into the restrooms at Gresham High School. The school district declined our interview request, though in a statement they say safety of students and staff are their top priority and they plan to discuss solutions with the teachers union. Though to Duncan, there's a disconnect. Our building administration is under the assumption that things are getting better. We're not seeing it. And now she's fearing the worst. It's going to take something bad happening for change to happen, we're afraid. Thomas Schultz, KGW News. Okay, ballots are in the mail for the Oregon primary. Just a reminder, with Election Day less than three weeks out, we hope you will join us tomorrow night for the final debate in the race for Multnomah County District Attorney. The debate between DA Mike Schmidt and Senior Deputy DA Nathan Vasquez is co-hosted by KGW and The Oregonian. I'll be co-moderating with Oregonian investigative journalist Noel Crombie. That is live tomorrow evening at 630 right here on KGW.